Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to lesson number 11 of this Planet Coaster Top Tips for Realism series. And today we are going to be talking all about park railways. So you're already familiar with the concept of a park railway. It's either going to be used to transport guests from one side of the park to another, or it's used as a ride in its own right. And so there are a few tips and tricks that you can use when creating realistic looking park railways. Um, so we are going to break this one down into basic and pro. So we're going to start with the basics. So we're not going to use any kind of theme makers toolkit items and it's going to be available for all console players and you guys that are just beginning with the game. Um, so you'll always find your railways in amongst your track rides area and then you just have to choose which of the two railways you're going to use. You've got the Connie Express which is the iconic original railway uh, that came with the game and then later on the Iron Horse was added. Uh, the Iron Horse tends to carry more people so that's why I like to use this one instead of Connie Express, but Connie Express is just as uh, just as good, right? So, of course, the first thing you're going to need to do is place down your station, and then you get presented with your tracks as uh, you're familiar. Just like roller coasters, you can change the length of your track. Um, I always tend to use the the smallest I can do, which is 14 meters. Uh, that's purely because I have a little bit more control over the direction of the track. So, once you place down your station, you need to start thinking about where your uh, actual track is going to go um, and whether you have angle snap or on that's uh, on or off that's completely up to you so you place down place down your track now it's a good idea to actually survey the the whole park that you've got at the moment and start to understand where you want your track to go where you want your railway to go if it's going to be a more scenic kind of railway uh, then you're going to want to place it more around scenery probably around key points of your roller coaster and it would be a good idea as well to try and get your uh, your actual track itself to wrap around an area of a coaster that you can't otherwise get to it's good to have exclusive viewpoints it gives you a reason to go on the train it gives you a reason to actually ride that ride otherwise they tend to be pretty forgotten unless they're being used as transport and you want to go from place to place so i like to wrap mine for example through the middle of a coaster so i might consider uh, putting it underneath and through here maybe um, or i might bring it round uh oh i don't know where i would here actually uh round this way and then through the corkscrew maybe. So I just like to make a bit of a sightline of it. Otherwise, I also like to wrap paths around it as well. So you would have seen me doing that in Raygate Lake. There's lots and lots of path interaction, lots and lots of ability for guests on the train to interact with guests on the path. And in real life parks, you tend to find that people would be waving at passers-by and that, that gives that kind of lovely little interaction that your, your park would have, make it more wholesome. So I'm placing down my track. Um, the thing with park railways that I tend to find is that you, unless you really, really need to, the rails shouldn't be completely dead straight. Um, I, it's, it's a bit of a weird one to explain. I tend to use straight rails only when I need to, things like level crossings and bridges. Otherwise, I let my track meander its way around the park. Of course, if you use straight track, you can go from point to point pretty easily. You know, it's the quickest the quickest point. But I just tend to find that it just loses its soul if you use straight track where it's not needed. So like, for example, here, I've just bent it round slightly and then it's coming round again. And I like to follow the terrain. So try and keep it as flat as possible. Even when you're in a, a really hilly park, try and keep your track as flat as physically possible. Now, that doesn't mean that your track can't go up and down hills. Of course, it can absolutely go up and down hills. Um, and of course, there's there's examples out there, you know, like the railway at Dollywood, for example, uh, it goes up and down a hill. So it's not as if there isn't a, a real life precedent. But just be aware that the more incline and decline that you have in your track, the more stress you're going to be putting on the components. So you're going to want to keep any kind of uh, hill a little bit looser, a little bit more free. You don't want to be having stark hills for too long either. So consider sort of having it like this, where you're going up a little bit of a hill, you leave it as a straight section, you might bring it around a corner, then you take it up a little bit of a hill again um, for a couple of for a couple of places, and then you bring it back down to, to level. And so this enables you in real life to actually stop the wear and tear of the constant on the motor. It gives the it gives the motors and stuff um, and the whole in uh, 
the insides of the train. I don't know what they don't know. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> um, but it gives the the ability for all of the components and everything to actually have a rest. You're not putting constant stress on it. Um, and then likewise, coming downhill as well, you don't want to be putting too much stress on brakes. And you want to have the ability for uh, the the driver, if you have one, to actually regain control if for any reason the brakes fail. So having uh, level out points enables you to kill speed as as you're going down. Um, it's not a constant increasing speed and it, it yeah it just has that ability to slow the train down so like i say your tracks can absolutely go up and down hills but just be very mindful of what you do when you do so you've thought out where your where your whole train's going to go and you've realized that you've cut off your two paths so of course it feels natural that you would either have a bridge um or you would have a path but oh no i can't place a path so the game is built in where it won't let you have path, uh, path and track collisions in this configuration. There is a way that you can that you can fool the system. So within the settings of the whole game, you have the ability to uh, turn on or off track collisions. So you need to make sure that your track collisions on this one in game are off. And once they are off, you can then come back into your train. You can uh, take three nodes, roughly. Either one either side of where you want your path to be. So you take three nodes and delete it. Delete it completely. Get rid. Now you need to place your path. So you place your path down uh, where you actually want it. So let's say we're going to place the path here. Ignore the fact that I've got all of the stuff from the previous demos still in, still in place. Like it's just flattened the train for me and, and now it's showing everything from before. Don't, don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> and then you come back into your train. You edit it. And then you straighten it up and for this one you need to do a little bit of a technique so now you can see it's going to let me place the track over the top of the path but it wouldn't let me place the path underneath the track following uh, so now what we need to do is lower the track ever so slightly and I literally mean ever so slightly I tend to use 66 degrees because it just seems to work quite nicely so 66 degrees and then I level it out and then I bring it up 66 degrees now this can be um, a little bit finicky it can be a little bit picky and as you can see this is not entirely perfect so i now need to uh, go back and i now need to start playing with the, the system a little bit more so i know i'm going to need to bring uh, this down to 66 like so and then i'm going to bring this to zero uh, actually, no, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the path there instead. Because I can then leave that as zero and straighten it out. And then bring it up to 66. Or 64. 64 is just as good. Um, and then I can place that. Now, sometimes you're going to uh, you're going to freak out the, the the track system because you're not placing track in exactly the places that you did before. So in this kind of instance, you'll see that if I delete this segment and go back one, it's letting me auto complete, and it'll start from zero and it will auto complete to where I left the track originally. So you can see it's doing the job of raising it up here, right? So. That's one thing that that's one way that you can just complete the track. The other thing that you can do is place your piece of track that you were here, delete this segment, and then auto complete it again. But now you can see you have yourself this awesome, awesome level crossing, and it's just about the right height. Again, I only use 66 because I quite like the fact that the tracks go right into the path. I mean, you might choose to use the 50s or the 40s. Um, essentially, what you're trying to do is hide the sleepers. You don't want the sleepers to be poking through your uh, poking through your path. Now, you are going to need to deal with the fact that your train will drive through people because we're not we're using the game in a way that is not intended. So it's not intended that we do this with it properly. So you can't stop your guests. It's physically impossible in game. You can't stop your guests from walking through whilst the trains whilst the trains coming. So you might just need to 
shut your eyes. So, that's level crossings. I just need to do some quick preparation off camera so we can talk about your actual decoration. So I'll be back in a sec. So by now you would have taken quite a lot of care about thinking about where your track is going to go throughout your park and you've decided whether it's going to go up and down hills and all of that sort of stuff. So that's what I've done off camera. I've just pre-prepared some things to show you. So, let's go ahead and talk about decoration. It feels like it's probably the right place to start with our level crossing because that's what we were just talking about. So of course your level crossing is going to have a few things it's going to need. Um, it's going to need some kind of warning system for your guests. Now, you can choose to use barriers if that's what the you, you do in your park. Or you can choose to use um, crossing lights. You can choose to use sounds. You can choose all sorts of stuff. So I, in, I always have in my, uh, in my park... And in my blueprint collection, just barriers that I've created for previous parks. I mean, they're nothing. They're nothing special. <laughs> they're literally nothing special. Uh, they are art shapes um, and the uh, lamp post, the sign post that's coloured red and uh, red and white. So this is a, a round art shape, some cube art shapes, and that's it. It's done. But they look like barriers, and they look pretty awesome. And you can have them in different configurations. So I have a right barrier, I have a left barrier, and I have a down barrier. Um, that I can just choose choose to use. So, job done. I don't always use these. I don't think I use these in Raygate Lake. I think I kept it open. So, the next thing you need to consider then uh, is how you're going to stop your guests. And if you want them to stand back at a certain point, then you're going to need to ask them to do so. So, your art shapes are where you come into this one. Uh, so, of course, you've seen us you do this technique all the time, especially in the last car park video. Uh, so you'll be no stranger to how we do how we do this. So we take our art shape, we go X on the keyboard, angle snap on, bring it right up so it's in uh, horizontal or vertical, whichever way you want to look at it. Uh, and then you bring it right down to the path and then you can place it. Don't forget to change color first. So yellow or white, or depending on the compliance of your, of your country, um, here in the UK, white or yellow is acceptable. Um, so that's what you do there. Uh, you could also put hatchings in the middle if, if you so wish. Um, I know that I think American railways require you to have a hatching. British ones tend not to unless you're using vehicles. Um, so if you're having golf carts or whatever running along, then you would need some kind of hatchings, yellow box zones and all of that. But this would be perfectly acceptable for, for what, we're, what we're trying to achieve here. Now... Do you want some kind of lettering on the floor? Where well, again, you've seen this technique before. Um, you just need to take one of the signs from uh, your building set. You can choose whichever one. It's completely up to you. Um, I like to use the bigger Western sign because it's just the one that's got the biggest text, right? Um, and I just place it on the floor. And I do one there. Come on. And then I just go... Beware. And it always, <laughs> it always places it the wrong way around. Uh, I just, and I can never, I always never remember. Uh, I'm just going to try and match the colour to the path as much as I can. Purely because sometimes when you zoom out, it clips back up through the path. So you want to give yourself the best chance you can of trying to hide the clip where possible, right? Um, and then you just change the colour of the text. So I'm just going to create that as a... Um, it's going to be a, a dirty grey. Remember, it wouldn't be... Unless unless you're going for a park that's brand new and it's just been laid down, your lettering and everything on the ground would not be pure white. It would be a grey colour. Remember that when, when you're dealing with your, uh, with, with your realism aspect. And then, all you do from here is just sink your, uh, sink your, your sign down into the ground and then raise it so that... The pixels of the sign are hidden underneath your path, but the pixels of the wording are raised up. And so you end up with uh, the sign on the floor. Once it's then placed and, you, and you're using a, a completely level path, you can then copy the sign, move it across like that. And then you click on the sign again and you can uh, T-R-A-I-N and you train. Uh, there we go. Just like that. So you now say, beware, train. And that's a way that you can then add all of your text into the road without actually having to use the Maker's Toolkit. You can just do that. And this, like, as you've seen elsewhere with all of the other builds, it works on buildings, it works on road, it works on asphalt, it works on uh, flat um, roof pieces that, that we've put down. It's a technique that you can use everywhere in your park. 
So this is your real basic setup for your um, for, for your level crossing. And like I say, remember that your guests will still walk through here. You have absolutely no way of stopping them from uh, from walking through. And unfortunately, that's just a limitation of the game. But we can get as close as we can get, right? So we now need to talk about your actual track itself here. So you can see that my terrain um, along here is is hiding the track slightly. So you're just going to need to go along and just tidy this up. Um, I'm just going to go selected because I think I've still got the uh, the grass selected here. So I'm just going to go along and I'm just going to lower it down. Now what you need to be aware of is because you've lowered the, the track to come down to path level and back up again, your sleepers on your track are not going to show the entire way. And that's absolutely fine. You'll tend to find in real life that rather than raising the path to track level and down again, uh, or should I say in the UK, rather than raising the path to track level and down again, the track will go down to path level and up again. But for that reason, sometimes the terrain and everything would hide sleepers. So this is, is actually UK, quite UK realistic. Um, might not be not necessarily for, for the, you guys in the US, but this is. Um, so the track will always be placed on something. There will always be a bed that this sits on. Um, and that bed tends to be concrete or it tends to be rock. So... Off camera, I've just made sure that I've got the right the right palettes. I've got rock, so I'm just going to do a brush with really low intensity uh, and a relatively small size, around three meters, because this rock is going to be quite intense when you when you place it down. So you're just going to want to just dapple it through just a little bit. You don't want to have it solid like this because as you can see it's a really intense texture and it's not going to be built on sheer cliff face kind of rock so we're just going to paint this a little bit over this way like so you're also going to need to um, have some kind of concrete base or some kind of mud base so i've got this rock one which we've been using as mud over in the terrain so i'm just going to take the intensity on this one up slightly but keep the size the same and i'm just going to paint this in along this way like so like so and like so so what we're now doing is we're starting to represent the fact that this uh train track has to have been placed on some kind of foundation for it to be for it to be stable now remembering as well that uh your grass if there is any growing won't be growing very well because it will be trampled constantly so you'll just want to kill off some of your grass around the outsides and around the outsides here like so like that uh, and remember as well if you're going to line your um your track with trees leaves will be on the <laughs> british rail uh joke incoming there uh your leaves will be on the track you'll have delays uh but you're going to want to represent your leaves along your track as well and so you're just going to put this where it's where it's mostly appropriate and of course you will have some kind of flowers flowers will grow wherever wherever they possibly can even in the worst of places. Think of the likes of the poppies on the war fields. Uh, they will grow where, wherever the conditions are right. So you just need to represent some of your flowers elsewhere along the, along the way. I mean, this is probably a bit overkill. This is just overdoing it to demonstrate how you how you would be able to do it in in game. But you're starting, like I say, to represent the fact that this track is not only going to be worn down because the train's going to be passing over it time and time and time again throughout the day. It's also placed on a bed of rock or on a bed of concrete and that concrete is probably starting to overgrow it's probably starting to be reclaimed by nature and you're just starting to represent that now we need to keep our guests safe so the next thing we need to do is fence off this uh this whole area and this is the bit that takes the most time and i hate doing this in real life this was the worst bit of Fregate lake because that train track was long um, but you need to find a way of keeping your guests safe. It's absolutely needed. So you can choose the fence. And the best thing for realism is to mix your fences up depending on your themes. So don't just choose one fence type and stick to that through the entirety of your track. Mix it up. Make it relevant to the area that you're that you're actually designing, that you're actually doing. So uh, you can choose any one of the in-game ones. I mean, the wooden stake fence is awesome if, if you're uh, using this. And I like to use this one the wrong way. So I like to use this upside down and 
up slightly so it's not so tall um, like that. Or you could use... Uh, where is it? Oh, this is the one, the one that I can never find. Um, <laughs> every single time I try and find this fence, I can't find it. Um, it's the... Uh, where is it? There. No. Sorry, guys. It's the small one of this. Uh, there we go. There they are. <laughs> uh, so you can you can use like the the more generic fencing if if you if you like. Um, let me just turn the snap off and the align to surface off is that aligned to a no, okay. aligned to a surface off and I'm just going to press and hold shift so it maintains its height and then you just place next to it well you know how to place fences hey welcome to the tutorial on how to place fences uh, <laughs> so you want to make sure that you've got enough space for your um uh, for your train to pass and also, if you need to evacuate the train, that your people have got enough space to get off the carriages. So you don't want to have, where possible, you don't want to have your uh, fence too close to the track where you don't have much room. Because if you need to get people off that train, they need space to get off that train and evacuate safely. So just bear that in mind. You don't need to always follow that because you might be going next to water or you might be going next to a sheer cliff face. Um, and it's absolutely fine to do that. But just be aware of your exit strategy if you need to evacuate the train. So you're going to complete your fencing uh, as you go along. And the next thing then to uh, to think about is how your uh, nature is going to be treating this, trow this railway line. So, of course, you're going to have your... Uh, purposely placed nature around so you may choose to have flower beds and everything that, that are uh, alongside just like we've done here so you're going to purposely place things but remember that where you've got fences and where you've got certain things it's going to overgrow you may not be able to get in to maintain these unless it's outside of the season so as you start to go through the year this is going to be uh, overgrowing so just remember to place some kind of overgrowth in certain places Few and far between. You don't need to overdo it. You know, you don't need masses and masses and masses and masses of, uh, <laughs> of of hedges. But just be aware that you need some kind of overgrowth. And on occasion, that overgrowth will also be on the tracks as well. So the train will do a relatively good job of getting rid of everything on the on the tracks anyway. But you're just you are still going to get overgrowth. Remember back to the nature to mix it up. The nature episode that we did to mix it up. So I've just used the uh, uh, the, the small bush and now I'm using creosote for the dead the dead bits that you would find um, So you might consider placing one there Placing one there maybe uh, remember that flowers grow wherever so you may place a couple of flowers either side like that um, And then don't forget as well that you've also got your uh, scaviola scaviola and um, so you can place, you can sink that into the ground, and then you can start placing that, which gives you a bit more, a bit more freedom, um, a bit more overgrowth. And again, it depends on how you, how overgrown you want that to, to be, and how how extreme. Let me just take a few of those away. There we go. Uh, how extreme you want it to be, like so. And then don't forget that you've also got your rose technique uh, that you can use if you want actual flower beds. So you can place flower beds alongside. Like so. And then you just keep building up uh, this whole train track as layers. Um, and you just keep building it and building it. And eventually what you'll find is what you place either side of your train track will then start to bring it to life. So when you look at this in isolation right now, it might look a bit rubbish. You might think, you might be a bit disappointed with it and go, this doesn't look as I want it to. But you need to take a step back and think, does it not look like what I want it to because of what's around it rather than what I've done to it? Because sometimes it's what's around it that's making it feel unreal rather than what you've done than what you've done here. So your best thing to do if you're ever feeling like that is to go and look at reference images. Go and find a park railway somewhere that does it really well and see whether yours compares to their image. And so the last thing to show you before we start to introduce the theme makers toolkit is how we deal with terrain changes. So over here, um, I've just done the same thing. Um, 
in terms of track placement, I've raised it up ever so slightly and my rides are ever so slightly down. Remembering that this, this terrain change is very subtle, um, but it's still a terrain change. So I, either, I need to decide whether I'm going to smooth off the terrain and have it as a hill uh, and a bit of a natural decline, or whether I'm actually going to physically line it. So here I may choose to use rocks and I may choose to do rock work. So I'm just going to throw down a few rocks in no particular order or care, like so. This also works next to water, by the way. So this ride might actually be water, um, and this, this principle works where you can actually bring the water line right up close to the edge of the railway line. Um, and then you've just got some brilliant views. I think it's uh, oh, one in America. Uh, that does it really well. Um, it's completely got. I want to say Kenobi, but it's not. Is it Kenobi Lake? I'm. Sh please correct me in the comments. <laughs> you guys are awesome at doing that. So it's that one anyway. Uh, it's the one that Coaster Monkey Studios is using for Lake George. That one. Um, and that's kind of what you're uh, what you're looking for here. Is you can bring the water right up close. So remember that you're going to need your fencing along the side. Uh, for this one, I'm going to choose another. Uh, let's actually use this one. Uh, so I'm just going to turn my angle snap on, bring it round, back up like this, like this, and turn my snap back off like this, like this. Like this, like this. <laughs> there we go. I'm not going to do any more because it takes it takes its time, right? Um, don't forget to do your small terrain. So, just really quickly, like so. A bit of dead grass, a few flowers. Like so, I'm going to use some of the tarmac because obviously it's going to be on a, a bedrock. Uh, there we go. And then I'm just going to take some more nature. Uh, we've done the rocks, so I'm going to take the bush. And I'm going to bring this down. And this is actually more important for the nature because this is going to be an area that you're not necessarily going to get in to maintain. So this is where you're going to start playing with... Uh, nature going next to rocks, but remember it doesn't respect nature doesn't respect boundaries So where you've got rocks and where you've got uh, stuff you're going to have bits pointing through and sticking sticking through like this, right? So This is actually pr probably a better uh, a better example of how nature and the railway lines going to going to interact Remember that flowers grow wherever um, they do not also respect where you do or don't want them to be So you can put them down and of course, the colour of a colour of flower is completely up to you. Uh, you would have chosen your palette of colours in in advance to doing this, uh, to doing this, and then you may decide to bring the scaviola back in just to do a bit more overgrowth, but slightly different overgrowth into the track, like so. Uh, and there you go. That's that's how you do it with uh, a terrain change. So what you've now got is a, a is an artificially changed terrain that actually looks quite natural um so you'll you put some kind of retaining wall in uh, just to stop the the actual terrain from falling away um think of like falling rocks and and landslides and everything so you, you're stopping all of that you've got your fence along the side to protect you from the ride you can you've got a pretty good uh view of the ride from the train track and it's an exclusive uh view of the ride you wouldn't be able to see this from any other side and you would just continue this through um along the path and, and everything like that. So let's switch, switch it up a little bit and turn to pro. And let's just have a look at some of the theme makers toolkit items that you can use. All right then, so you'll be pleased to know there's not actually a lot to talk about when it comes to Theme Makers Toolkit, because as always, the Theme Makers Toolkit is just there to enhance what you're doing. You've already achieved the basics by using the in-game stuff. And off camera, I've just decorated this up. I haven't done anything spectacular or anything that you don't already know about. There's no hidden trickery or anything like that. I just need a thumbnail, right? So, <laughs> so yeah, oh, that's all I've done. Is I've just thrown down a couple of bits of nature. Um, I haven't done anything else that that you've not already seen. So, Theme Makers Toolkit. 
When it comes to railways, really, really simple, really, really easy, really, really awesome. Uh, the absolute biggest thing I use when using a railway is gravel. So, Hydro released this awesome, awesome gravel. This is another time-consuming thing that you're going to do, but the result is absolutely worth it. This gravel is awesome, and it's versatile. You can use it wherever. I've used it in in the middle of coasters, I've used it in the middle of pathways, but I also use it by my railway because of course all good railways are based on gravel. Um, so I always tend to keep it the grey that comes with it because I like having a well kept new looking railway. I, I just prefer that but if you are going for slightly older um, just remember to mix up your greys slightly because you're going to have a different palette of colours because there's going to be some gravel that's old and some gravel that's new. Uh, you, but you don't want to mix up your colours too much. You don't want to go too extreme. You're not looking for a rainbow. Um, you're just looking for it to be ever so slightly discoloured in places but brand new in others. Because they would come along and they'd throw new bits of gravel down, right? And they'd be And they would be done with that um you can also consider swapping out your uh your lettering here for the letters that you can find uh, i think i used the small hydro font in raygate lake just because it it fitted the brand of the park slightly better uh, but again you can just uh sink them into the ground so if i go uh t r a i <laughs> n congratulations i can spell train and you can too uh, <laughs> so you can just sink that into the ground this has come down as gray uh, it's actually it is actually white but it's to do with the um, the color of the the color of the day the time of the day and the way that this the in game light is hitting the uh, is hitting the color of the uh sorry the texture of the actual letter so just you can use whatever or you can use tripwise font uh, i love this one as well such a badass font um you can sink that into the ground or the i think there's some other ones you've got some blueprint ones that you can use uh so font uh you've seen me use this one in fundy fun spot the ice cream font um or there is the deco font i'm sorry i don't know who did this one um oh mbs it says right in front of my face uh so the mbs font or you've got uh, letters i think funky letters i think this is an hydro special as well um so you've got those, those ones as well that, that you can use so you can download that, and that those left those letters there that you've just seen in the blueprints, they're also non theme makers toolkit, so you can use those regardless. So going back to the gravel anyway. Um, so once you've uh, once you've got yourself into a into a position where you're happy with with this texture, you can just about get away with selecting an area, making a building, editing the building, and then copying and pasting it. It's the lazy way out. Like, I know that some of you would absolutely much prefer to place this gravel by gravel because it gives you absolute control over whether your gravel, where your gravel is going to go. Um, but, as you can see, doing it copying a paste job and allowing the terrain to do most of the work for you, you don't actually see a repeat in what you're uh, what you're copying across so you are okay in that aspect and if you look at raygate lake that's what i've done i've just copied and pasted it was a slightly bigger section um and i overlay the sections as well so like i've done this bit now um i may take uh oh it's already a building isn't it um so i edit the building and i may take the section and then layer it over like that so it's not I'm not actually doing it as if it's a building where I'm doing it section by section like this. Uh, I've overlaid it slightly so that it's there. And then I'm just allowing the terrain underneath just to just to do its thing. So the gravel wouldn't be perfectly even throughout. Uh, you're going to have variations and the terrain like the train's going to be pushing that gravel into that into that ground. So just make sure that you're 
that you're varying all of that. So, other thing makers toolkit items that you can use. Um, you can that you will have things like signs that you can find. Um, you can have oh, you can have all sorts signal boxes. Um, different fences so you can swap out your fences for better looking fences and again Raygate Lake I did exactly that I swapped it out for um, a slightly different fence you can have electric control boxes next to it so if I go back into my station stuff that we had here uh, you could have an emergency electric point so uh, let's go angle snap align to surface so you can have things like this. Don't forget that you could also have CCTV. So because it is a ride, um, you're going to want to have some kind of CCTV. And you're going to want that CCTV to have coverage of the whole crossing. So that if anything does happen to uh, occur as an incident, then you're going to have full sight as to what that was. Um, for this one, I'm just using the the random coaster CCTV that, that you can download, but you can create your own member. The CCTV cameras exist as, as items in their own right. Um, you can also have ride signs. So uh, the one that I use is My Curious Mind from their, from his Smiler build. I think it's this one, yeah. Um so it's the right area sign. And it just says right area, keep out. And you just place that all along uh, all along your fences. It's another time-consuming piece that you do. But it, again, it makes it totally worth it. The distance and everything we've talked about before. So I'm not, I'm not going to go into that. Uh, but you just place your uh, right area, keep out signs all along. One there, one there. And then one there. And one there. Um, and of course you can use all of the uh, tips for the theme makers toolkit that we did in the in the roller coaster station in your station for uh, your train. So we're not going to talk about the station for the train because the principles are exactly the same. You'd still need electrics, you still need uh, access points, you still need emergency points, you still need queue management. All of the stuff that we talked about over here uh, in the station is true. Likewise with the maintenance and the transfer tracks, that's all still true for the train. Make sure that somewhere you're Placing down an area for your for your trains to be serviced to maintain, uh, for maintenance. I'll show you that in a moment. That's going to be a secret sneaky bonus section for those of you that get to the end of the video. Uh, and yeah, so you've got loads of other theme makers toolkit items that, that you can use. But you're very limited in what you can do. I mean, there's only so much you can do with a railway, right? <laughs> Before you start running out of ideas. But this is the sort of thing that you can do to, to bring it up. Um, this would be perfectly acceptable. You might, you might choose to not use... I'm not, Banging on about the gravel. Uh, shut up about the gravel. You can still put the gravel uh, all the way along if you want to. Or you can have it filtering in and out. It's just as realistic either way. It just depends on the budget of your park and how you want it uh, how you want it to be, to be done. So, let's do that secret sneaky section. Right, so secret sneaky time. Um, I didn't want to do this before. There's a, I'll fess up. The autosave was about to come and it was going to mess up the recording. So, <laughs> that's... <laughs> the reason why uh, but of course all of your trains are going to need a maintenance area and a service area you choose where to put that in uh, unlike roller coasters where you're a little bit uh, tied to where they can go and they have to be near some kind of transfer track and they have to have all sorts of mechanisms trains are way 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 easier trains are bi-directional they without any problem they can go forwards and backwards so you don't have to necessarily worry about the strategy you just need to make it well hidden you don't need them near a station it helps if it's near a station but it doesn't need to be near a station they can literally be anywhere on your circuit and because it's a big circuit you've got a lot of places that you can choose from you could even think to bring in this park you could think to bring the uh, the train around and into the maintenance area and back again like if that's what you wanted to do and then you could have your have your shed and you just hide the exit points but anyway let's talk about how you're actually going to achieve that because you do need to do a bit of trickery with this so the way that I do this is um, I know that I've got this bend that's coming. So I've chosen, by the way, sorry, I should say this before. I've chosen this to be my area, um, despite what I've just said. I've chosen this to be my area. So I take my section of track and just like we did with the level crossing, we're going to delete it. And then we're going to uh, select this. This is this is where it gets a bit finicky, right? Because the autocomplete kicks in and you, it thinks you're trying to complete the circuit and all that sort of stuff and it's not going to work. But what we need to do is... Uh, Bring the track forward like this. 
and then just bend it round to where you're gonna going to want your uh, actually just bend it around a bit more uh, to where you want your actual maintenance shed to be. Remember the principles um, that it needs to have access to roads and it needs access to other areas of, of maintenance. So this would probably be fine because you'd have access here, right? Um, so we've done this bit. Now what we need to do is this <laughs> gets get so it's just so fussy. Uh, so we need to take this one section and delete it again. We then need to come back here and we need to bring our track back round and back round again. So that's now completed that. But we now need to put this one back in. Um, so remember that these tracks would never meet. So this is the this is the, the point where you need to consider the attention to detail. These tracks would never meet because they are points. Um, so we need to find a way of making sure that our angle snap is off and just misaligning them ever so slightly doesn't need to be a lot um and in fact that's the wrong is that the wrong way uh that no that is the right way that is the right way so you misalign them ever so slightly uh, like that. So what you've now got is you have the game thinking that it is a complete circuit because we've connected uh, this bit of track with this bit of track and it goes around and now the game is going to ignore this bit of track here and it won't know that it's not a complete circuit it just it, because it just goes by what's connected along in a, in, a, in the actual circuit itself. But you've now got an awesome looking interchange here. You can now bring down here and you can build all of your maintenance areas and your, and your sheds and everything that way. So, guys, that's the end of the set, uh, the the whole thing. Thank you for getting to the end. <laughs> I hope you found this uh, helpful. If you've got any suggestions for future videos, please leave them down in the comments below. I'm starting to run out of ideas. Um, I frequently run polls over on the Planet Coaster Nation uh, Facebook page. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that. It's just that's the where that's where I get the most responses. Uh, so that's where I choose to put the polls. Uh, so feel free to come and say hi. Uh, but yeah, like I say, if you have any uh, ideas for future videos, let me know in the comments below. I am genuinely running out of ideas. Uh, <laughs> I need to create more and know what you guys what you guys want. So thank you so much for coming along. If you have found this helpful, really would appreciate a like on the video. Uh, it helps to find new audiences and spread the word. So it helps massively. Um, and of course, until we speak again, I will see you next time. I'll see you on Sunday for Funday Fun Spot. Please keep yourself safe. Take care of yourselves. Bye.